Well, Russell, thanks for being here today. I'm Delighted excited to, to walk through the new Ready to Sing Easter musical with us. Very excited about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, before we start, why don't we talk about the past few years of your life and what's been going on with that? <laughs> it's been interesting, to say the least. Um, I've always had a heart for missions, and uh, I've always been very active in our church besides writing music. Right. But four years ago on a mission trip to Japan, I felt the Lord really deal with my heart in uh, silence of all things. Here I am, a guy who's made a joyful noise all these years. <laughs> right. And I felt a distinct call uh, to more for the Lord, not mm -hmm. just music, but also uh, a calling to pastoral ministry. Yeah. So uh, I've been ordained and uh, I've just finished uh, my master's program uh, in religion. Very so good. Uh, I, my music is more passionate than ever. I understand the text better than ever. And so uh, while I will be doing some pastoral role along the way, right. uh, I believe I'll write music for the rest of my days. So Absolutely. And that's hopefully what we want. ready to sing. We'll stay around. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's great. We're great to hear that and happy for you. And congratulations and, oh, you know, walk with you in the next part of your life. Yeah, we're actually, uh, I'm part of a church plant in Murfreesboro, Tennessee called yeah. Seeds Church. And it's been going for a little over a year now and just couldn't be happier. That's Always fantastic. really blessing and honoring you. That's awesome. Well, before we dive into the Easter musical, I uh, wanted to just maybe give a brief history of Ready to Sing, um, and just kind of talk about what, what that's meant to Brentwood Benson and to the church audience over the past years. Yeah, it, uh, it came about so organically. Uh, at the time, there were uh, two executives from Brentwood Benson, and I, all three of us, were, were working in music but had part-time ministry music jobs. Right. And we discovered together that uh, Sunday came around once a week, ready or not. Right. So within that, uh, we just couldn't find the resources that we felt suited best. So yeah. we just said, well, let's, let's bring it, you know? Yeah. So uh, it really came from that. Had no idea that uh, 28 years later that it would still be thriving. That's but incredible. I think that speaks to the organic nature of it. Absolutely. Uh, so many of my dear friends that are arrangers, especially in that era, uh, their minds thought and they heard the big church with the big live orchestra. And we all love that. Yeah. But uh, the Lord gave me a true heart for those churches that are small to medium, that have volunteer or part-time ministers of music. Yeah. And so the heart behind it has always been, let's give it the passion and, and really the, the effort and the heart, uh, but just make it where it's accessible. Absolutely. And so that's been uh, the roadmap ever since. And it's done extremely well <laughs> for all of us. It has been certainly nothing that I thought at the start would kind of define my career. Absolutely. Uh, and if, you know, at the end of my days, if I am known uh, especially for the ready to sing and what it's meant to the church, right. uh, I'm pleased with that. Yeah. Well, the interesting too is, is it, didn't, it didn't start out Doing musicals, we started out just doing collections, right? And right, it was just uh, it was really back before there were worship sets. Right, uh, we kind of designed them in a worship set mode. They would be three song medleys that you could either stop after the first one. You could use them in pieces or right. just do the whole thing through composed. Yeah, and it began with that, and it was probably maybe ten years later that we decided to do a seasonal musical. I remember the first one. We said, well. Let's try it and see right. you know, see if it works. If it doesn't, <laughs> then we'll just stick to the... Because we were trying to be that, that big book early on that had different seasons in it. Right. So to do a full musical, and then uh, we kind of haven't stopped ever since because yeah, it really resonated. Absolutely. And the beautiful thing, too, that I'm finding, um, now literally it's being used around the world. We're finding out through social media yeah. uh, all the different continents that the music, even... Uh, uh, for Easter, Sue Smith and I were asked to, to preach a, a small sermon on video, and there wow. were churches that gathered in India to present our musical, oh, that's and amazing. they played our sermon at the end of it as an invitation. Those kind of moments we just never would have dreamed of years oh, ago. Sure. But the way that the Lord has blessed it, and even really big churches, you know, again, Sunday comes once a week, ready or not. Right. So it's not just limited anymore to accessibility to yeah. Uh, a certain genre of, of the churches, but it's really designed for every church, and uh, right. I couldn't be happier. That's awesome. So let's dive into the new Ready to Sing Easter musical for this year. Um, do you just want to talk about the concept and kind of how we came up with this? 
Yeah, it's interesting. You know, after all these years of writing so many musicals, I, I don't even know the count of how many musicals <laughs> right. that we have written. It would probably make me tired to even know that number. Sure. Uh, but it's always just wonderful how the good Lord just brings just brings the whole concept to life. Yeah. Uh, and when you guys had brought us in and had mentioned this Matt Redmond song called One Day, uh, I love to take just, okay, this will be our title. And then from there, what does that title say? Right. And so the whole concept to me of one day, there's an anticipation there. There is a, a preferred future that we don't have now, yeah. and that creates tension. And so just, and, and literally that idea of, of one day to come. And I thought first, you know, even from the beginning of time, we have the, the first two chapters in Genesis when there was unity and peace and joy. And then that third chapter hits and that created a tension uh, where humanity had failed. And so this promise through the ages of one day, the Messiah will come. And then even in, in the New Testament, you know, we see as, as Jesus grows and, and he becomes that Messiah, but then he dies and there's that anticipation of one day. Yes. Then he rises again. And now we're living in the world of from the, the first century Christians to the last century Christians, which could be us. Right. You know, we've had the Holy Spirit with us, but Jesus left with that promise of, again, one day. Yeah. So uh, this musical just exploded in our minds, Sue Smith and I. Yeah. Uh, it flowed so easily, and so much of it came from just that concept of this tension that one day, that anticipation of we have this promise yes. and this hope. So that began the whole musical. Uh, and then the first song, uh, I knew from the beginning you know, we often start a musical with just a big fanfare, and I love to do that. That's, that's so much fun. Yeah. But I remembered the song, The Old Rugged Cross. I love the end of that chorus, the way it says, I will cling to the old rugged cross, and someday, there's our tension again, uh, yeah. and someday we'll exchange it for a crown. Yes. And so uh, I knew that I wanted to begin this musical with just a brief, just tender underscore it ended up being French horns carrying that melody. And that may be one of those things that, you know, out of all the people that hear it, uh, maybe 1% kind of pick up on that to sing that and right. exchange it someday for a crown. That, that That's kind of a thread that I'm beginning. Absolutely. But then uh, the song Mercy Tree, uh, the first line is on a hill called Calvary, you know, there is this endless mercy tree. And so I just knew immediately, uh, even though this song, uh, it's an amazing song. It tells the whole story. So yeah. five minutes into the musical, we could just about say, okay, we've, we've had this, this beautiful celebration. Yes. And I love that because it, it gives us that entire story, even down to uh, eternity with Christ. Uh, and then we can go back from there and unpack the story. And yeah. go again. So I had heard this song a few years ago and was just absolutely smitten by it uh, and delighted that uh, we had a chance to use it yes, this year. Absolutely. It's a great, great song. Yes. Cool. Well, let's take a listen at the song then. All right.
Russell, that was a great arrangement of that. That song gets was, me every time. It's say, just I, an amazing song. I, I love the, you know, just starting off, like you were saying, started off quiet as opposed to this kind of this bombastic intro right. that, you know, you, that we can tend to have. It's just nice and have that, you know, that hint of the, the old hymn there and everything. That was, that's great. All creativity is about contrast. I've, it took me a lot of years to completely understand the value of that. But whether you're, yeah. you're, you're painting uh, or you're creating music or or poetry, you know, if you if you really magnify the contrast. So yeah. uh, I've discovered that. It took me a long time to discover because sometimes, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, silence is, is what makes the Absolutely. the highest moments even higher. So, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that song just, uh, you'd have to really try hard to mess that song up. <laughs> just, just kind of stay out of the way of it and let that yeah. word uh, tell itself. Yes. It's a great song. Well, that's cool. Well, um, so let's go to the, the next song, uh, The Answer, which is Jeremy Camp's song. Yeah. And we can talk about um, the medley that you go into and just and how that fits into this and the story through it. Medleys have always been an important part of Ready to Sing. Um, I love bringing the traditional, the familiar, uh, especially in a seasonal musical. You know, everyone's hearing this for the first time and you have all these sensories coming at you. Yeah. So every bit of familiarity uh, and that just brings warmth and, and everybody just kind of breathes if you've got a lot of new coming at them. Uh, and this song was just perfect for it. I, yeah. I had mentioned earlier, you know, this, this whole concept of one day, this anticipation. And the setup before this, the narration, uh, we have Mary and Martha and Lazarus, the story of uh, those dear friends yeah. of Christ. And uh, that tension they had of when Lazarus had died and they, they were like, you know, is, is Jesus coming? Because we know he could, he could make a difference if he right. were here. And then he didn't make it, and they were so disappointed. But he knew it didn't matter because he still had control, even though Absolutely. Uh, Lazarus had been gone, and he raised him from the dead. And this song leads right into that beautifully because we do live in a world, the first verse talks about it, there are questions. Yeah. There's turmoil. There's tension. There's strife. And there are questions on every hand, things that we had no idea many years ago would even be questioned. But in our postmodern culture, right. everything is questioned. Absolutely. There are no absolutes. And uh, so that song sets it up, you know, all the turmoil, all the questions that we have uh, today. But then the chorus hits and this wonderful song says, Jesus, he is the answer. Yeah. And then in the bridge, it talks about going into a, a, a part to tell even more about it. And it ended with, he's the rock on which I stand. So I knew immediately, it's like, okay, we're going to do, do this it. in 4-4 four, four, yep. on Christ, the solid rock I stand. And it just couldn't have, have yeah. fallen into that hymn uh, better. And so I, I really love that moment in this musical. I think yeah. it's a very victorious moment. And so it not only tells the biblical story of the hope that they found when Jesus came, right. but uh, the hope that we have today. Yeah. Jesus, he is the answer. That's great. And, and you're right. And Sue does a tremendous job of, of weaving the narrative and, and being able to set each song up and, and making sure that the impact is felt to that song. And she just, she does a wonderful she job. She always, uh, we, we give her the songs and she always weaves that thread of continuity that just, Absolutely. just keeps the heart in it. She's, she's so much of what these ready to sing musicals have been through the years, just the, uh, the integrity of the narration, uh, this telling the story, but, but in yeah. a fresh way, yeah. uh, she's just pure gold. That's awesome. Well, let's take a listen at the answer. I can tell you for certain, Jesus is our resurrection. He is our hope. He is our answer to every problem. So many questions, the world is reaching. So many
Well, Russell, another great song, another great arrangement. I love that song. Yeah, that's great. Um, so let's go to the last song of the book, which happens to be the, the title track, uh, One Day, which is a Matt Redmond song. Yeah. Um, like you mentioned earlier, it was just kind of a, one of those kind of light bulb moments when that yeah. you hear the song and it's, you know, it's the one that needs to be in there. So maybe walk, walk us through this and how Sue set that up as well. And, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. You know, when, when we looked at that song as, the, uh, as this musical, it obviously needed to be the finale. Yeah. Uh, which works great for a title song. But also, it brings in the chorus, the wonderful old hymn, When We All Get to Heaven. Yeah. And we think of Easter as the hope for our salvation, and it, it is all of that. Uh, but we do have that promise, as we talked about. When Christ left to go back to heaven and sent the Spirit to be with us, He gave us the promise that one day. Yeah. So uh, we... I don't think I've ever used uh, When We All Get to Heaven in an Easter musical before. Right. But it just, it ends this musical so perfectly. And it goes back, uh, Mercy Tree ends uh, with the same thing, alluding to be with, yeah. being with Jesus throughout yeah. eternity in heaven. So it's just the perfect uh, ending for this musical. And I really love this song. You know, we've seen a lot of the, the modern worship songs that'll take a traditional uh, hymn or a carol uh, to tie it in together. Uh, and they've just done a phenomenal job with this one yeah. uh, because the chorus just just flows right out of the verses. And the verses tell the story in a beautiful way as right. well. So I really love this song. Yeah. And I think it's a great way to end this musical. And it doesn't, it doesn't feel like a medley. It feels like one day is this one day when we all yeah. get to heaven. Right. That's the goal that we're looking for. You know? well, cool. well, let's take a listen at the final song then. Yeah. Yet I rejoice to be counted worthy to be persecuted for His sake, because I believed His promise. One day we would see Him. One day He would welcome us into His presence. One day heaven would be real. One day you'll make everything new. Jesus, one day
Russell, thanks for for bringing us this musical. Another um, just a great Easter musical. And you and Sue thanks. have done this. Thanks so much. Um, We've done it, a few together. Uh, yeah, just a few. <laughs> yeah, um, great. You know, song content, great arrangements. You know, great narrative from her. I, you know, it's it's amazing what y'all have done over the years and and where this brand has, has gone. Like I said, just mm. that's why I, I love the grateful. history. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's yeah the the history of this is is incredible to think about and. Um, and you can tell, I mean, your, y'all's hearts are in this and it's, it's wonderful. Awesome. Yeah. Appreciate it. Um, so yeah, so thank you for coming in and walking this with us. Delighted to. Um, thank you guys for watching. You've been a, a big part of this as well. And, um, you can pick your resources up at brentwoodbenson.com.